Welcome to EPG Patshala. In today's module, we are going to discuss on emission of carbon dioxide from energy consumption in developed and developing countries. A greenhouse gas absorbs and emits thermal radiation, thus creating a greenhouse effect. Along with other greenhouse gases such as nitrous oxide and methane, CO2, the carbon dioxide is the most important in sustaining a habitable temperature for the planet if it is in the natural greenhouse effect. But same time, it is an important contributor to the enhanced greenhouse effect. Since the industrial revolution, a rapid increase in carbon dioxide emission is reported, which is mainly attributed to energy driven consumption of fossil fuel. It results in the disruption of global carbon cycle. The concentration of carbon dioxide has increased in the atmosphere over the past century and it was only 280 ppm in pre-industrial era but has reached to 406 in August 2018. It is approximately 40 percentage higher as compared to the pre-industrial era and it ultimately lead to global warming. It caused ecological and health impacts. It caused a rise in sea level, disturbed water systems, altered growth of crops and extreme weather conditions like heat waves, droughts, storms, floods, etc. The energy consumption in developed and developing country varies. Similarly, some countries emit more carbon dioxide and some countries emit less carbon dioxide. So in this module, we are going to discuss on energy consumption in developed and developing countries, per capita carbon dioxide emission from developed and developing countries, carbon dioxide emission by the energy sector and various energy sources and also the mitigation measures to reduce carbon dioxide emission from the energy sector. What is a developed country and a developing country? The consumption pattern of energy and the power from different types of sources varies greatly among the developed and developing countries. A developed country, it is also known as economically developed country or industrialized country. An independent state with a highly established economy and advanced technological infrastructure is a developed country. The major criteria for entitling a country as a developed one is recognized as the extent of industrialization, the per capita income, gross domestic product, gross national product, expanse of extensive infrastructure and general standard of living. Examples of developed countries are United States of America, Australia, Germany, Japan, New Zealand, Norway. An independent state with a highly established economy and advanced technological infrastructure is referred as developed country. Developing country is a less developed or an underdeveloped nation. A country is said to be developing when its industrial base is not much developed and has a low human development index that is HDI as compared to other countries. China, India, Egypt, Indonesia, Bangladesh are some of the developing countries. Let's start with the energy consumption and production pattern in developing country taking US as an example. Coal, petroleum and natural gas have been the dominant source of energy for more than a century in this country. Electricity production is the major energy consuming sector which accounts for approximately 39% of the total energy consumption. Coal production reached a maximum in 2008 and decreased gradually till 2016 due to a decreased consumption of coal for generation of electricity. Natural gas production peaked in 2016 and was favored due to efficient and economic production technology. It contributes, this natural gas contributes a major portion of about 33% as a source to produce energy, which is followed by petroleum, coal, renewable energy and nuclear power as shown in this figure. The primary energy consumption by source as well as sector in US. Primary energy consumption by the source as well as sector varies greatly and the major portion of petroleum, 71% of the petroleum is contributed to the transportation sector. You can see in this figure the primary energy consumption by source as well as sector in the US. Here the petroleum, the 71% contributes to transportation and only 1% is used for electric power generation. On the other hand, almost 91% of the electric power generation is sourced from the coal combustor. The largest sector consuming primary energy is electric power generation 
which accounts for 39 percentage of the total energy consumed for different sources. Now the energy consumption and production pattern in developing country taking India as an example. The dominant source for energy production in India is coal. The country's coal demand is likely to increase by 90 percent from 2015 to 2040 as projected by International Energy Agency to support the continuous industrial growth. However, it is expected that proportion of coal in energy consumption will decrease from 49 percent to 43 percent by 2040 as the energy production from renewable and clean sources would be encouraged in the future. Source based energy consumption in 2015-16 is shown in this figure. It shows that the coal holds the largest share of 45 percent whereas natural gas has the smallest share of about 6 percent. Now fuel wise power generation in India. The power sector is one of the major energy consuming sector in India. Coal dominates as the major source of fuel in power generation as seen in this figure. It is followed by hydro energy, nuclear energy and renewable energy sources which including biomass energy, solar energy and wind energy. Now we will see the global carbon dioxide emission trends. The emission of carbon dioxide has increased from different sources which include energy generation from fossil fuel, electricity generation, transport, agriculture, residential and other commercial sectors. The global cumulative carbon dioxide emission is measured in metric tons and is calculated by adding up how much carbon dioxide each country has emitted starting from pre-industrial era to the date. United Kingdom, North America and other European countries produce carbon dioxide in large amount. United States dominated the global carbon dioxide emission in the year 2014. China is the second largest global cumulative emitter of carbon dioxide but in 2016 it attained a position first of first rank in the global carbon dioxide emission. The global annual carbon dioxide emission trends. The top carbon dioxide emitting countries include many developing countries also like China which held the top rank with the annual emission of 10,432 million tons in 2016. This figure shows the annual carbon dioxide emissions per country which is measured in million tons per year starting from 1750 to 2016. You can see in this figure China has decreased the emission in 2016 as compared to 10,546.61 million tons which was the maximum annual emission in the year 2014. In the decreasing order of carbon dioxide, you can see in this figure the China is followed by US, European Union, India, Russia, Indonesia, Brazil, Japan, Canada and Mexico. The top emitting countries would keep emitting carbon dioxide at an increasing rate during their development. Developed countries have shown a stabilizing trend in carbon dioxide emission and even show a decrease in the emission in the past decades. Still. The, in this figure, it is clear that the developed countries are emitting more carbon dioxide than the developing countries. The United States, for example, have shown a decrease in the annual emission from a maximum of 6,130 million tons in 2007 to 5,011 million tons in 2016. But I told you that despite of this global emission trend is still dominated by the intermediate economies and overall global emission have thus increased up to the year 2014 and thereby they start decreasing. In this table it shows the carbon dioxide emission from major developing countries during the period 1990 to 2016. You can see China with the topmost rank with 10,432 million tons. India with 2,533 million tons in 2016. And in this table, you can see the carbon dioxide emission of major developed countries during the same period 1990 to 2016. Here, USA is emitting to carbon dioxide at the rate of 5,011 million tons and Germany 7,757. So, in comparison to developed countries are emitting little more carbon dioxide. Now, we will see the per capita carbon dioxide emission from the countries. 
if we measure the carbon dioxide emission in terms of per capita is better than annual emission because it takes into account the population size of the country. As China has the world's largest population, the country is likely to be the world's largest carbon dioxide emitter. This a rational comparison of carbon dioxide emission can be made when the emissions are estimated in terms of carbon dioxide release per person. This figure shows average carbon dioxide emission per capita that is per capita per tons per year. Most countries show an increasing trend in carbon dioxide emission as they move on the path of development. The major difference in per capita emission can be seen in northern and southern countries. The annual carbon dioxide emission in poorer countries are much lower than the monthly emission of high income countries. The per capita emission of developed countries like United States and Japan in 2017 were 16.5 tons and 9.5 tons respectively. On the other hand, per capita emissions of developing countries like China and India were 7.5 tons and 1.7 tons respectively. Now the carbon dioxide emission by the energy sector. The electricity and heat generation are the two sectors which accounted for approximately 42 percentage of the global carbon dioxide emission in the year 2015. Almost 17 percent of the total emission from electricity and heat is contributed by industrial processes, whereas 11 percentage is contributed by the residential sector. Even though there is an increase in the proportion of renewable energy sources for heat and electricity production, coal still remains the dominant source for the same electricity production. Developing countries like China and India still rely majorly on coal combustion for the production of heat and electricity. Now we will see the carbon dioxide emission by energy sources. A variety of fuel types contribute to carbon dioxide emission related to industry and energy production. These include solid like coal and biomass, liquid fuel like petrol, diesel and oil, gaseous fuel like natural gas. These sources have influenced the emissions to different levels over the time. This figure shows the annual carbon dioxide emission from different types of fuels during the period 1751 to 2013 in million tons. The solid fuel in the form of coal dominated in the early industrialization. Europe and North America were first in using coal driven power plant at an industrial scale during 1700s. Soon in 1800s, oil and gas fuel started to contribute to the growing carbon dioxide emissions. After almost 100 years, emission from gas flaring and cement production also emerged. And in today's time, major emission are sources from solid and liquid fuels, whereas only small amount of contribution from flaring and cement production is seen. The emissions from solid, liquid and gaseous fuel have almost equal proportion in North America and Europe, whereas in Asia, the major portion of emission are contributed by solid fuel and significantly high emission from cement production industry is also prominent in this area. Now we will see the mitigation strategies to reduce carbon dioxide emission, especially from the energy sector. There are three main ways to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the environment. One is employing energy efficiency and conservation practices. Energy efficiency can be achieved through the application of technologies such as using the CFLs, insulation upgrades and high efficiency furnaces. Whereas energy conservation can be achieved through behavioral changes like switching off lights when not needed, using appliance differently and carpooling. The other one is using carbon free or reduced carbon energy sources. By using this technology, energy is generated without producing and releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The main carbon free energy sources are solar power, wind power, geothermal, low head hydropower, hydrokinetics that is from wave and tidal and the nuclear power. And the third is, the third strategy is shifting from high carbon fuels such as coal and oil to low carbon fuels such as natural gas which reduces the carbon dioxide emission. To combat with carbon dioxide emission, we need alternative fuel which protects and clean the environment. The alternative fuel like biodiesel, biobutanol and bioethanol are effectively used in many countries and thereby they are reducing their carbon dioxide emission. Capturing and storing carbon either from fossil fuel or from the atmosphere can also reduce the carbon dioxide emission. Capturing and storing of carbon from the atmosphere is done mainly by the carbon sequestration. In this process, carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere can be captured and stored in the plants or in the soil. The carbon sequestration can be performed by two ways, terrestrial sequestration and geologic sequestration. In terrestrial sequestration, 
collection and storage of carbon dioxide are done by plants and soil. In geologic sequestration, the storage of carbon dioxide is done under suitable underground formation. There are some international measures to reduce carbon dioxide emission. These are Paris Agreement, the first international climate agreement was Paris Agreement which was signed by both developed and developing countries in 2015 and the agreement came to force on 4th November 2016. COP22 was held in 21. August 2017, which was signed by 195 countries, is also a reduction in the carbon dioxide emission. The other one is the Kyoto Protocol, which was taken up in Kyoto in Japan on December 11, 1997 and came to force in February 16, 2005. Around 192 countries have ratified this protocol. In this protocol, the developed country, countries tried to reduce their emission, carbon dioxide emission, especially by 5% below 1990 level by the period 2008-12, but it was not a successful protocol. The main objective of that protocol is to reduce the emission from fossil fuel combustion and from the industrial emission. So you can see in this table, the Kyoto Protocol second commitment period targets by various countries. These countries agreed to reduce the carbon dioxide emission from fuel under second commitment period in Kyoto Protocol. It's mainly uh, 1990 and 2015 levels are given in this table as well, uh, as well as the percentage change. So to conclude, the pattern in energy consumption is directly linked with carbon dioxide emission from the developed and developing countries. The per capita carbon dioxide emission is also more from developed countries. The carbon dioxide emission from India reduced over the period of 1990 to 2016 and efforts are taken by the countries to reduce carbon dioxide emission without hindering its development. So in this module, we have seen the energy consumption in developed and developing countries, per capita carbon dioxide emission from these countries, and comparison we have seen, carbon dioxide emission by the energy sector and different energy sources, and also the mitigation strategies to reduce carbon dioxide emission from energy sector. Thank you.